Basically, what I'm kind of saying out here is the rib, this, uh, this whole entire section. And if you notice, at the very top where it meets this, this cross beam that goes across here, you've got these little notches that can literally come up into the air. You know, There's times where you're going to run into issues where certain voxels aren't going to meet other voxels. And, and you don't want to use your smooth tool because if you use your smooth tool on a section like this, even if you zoom it down to its smallest you know, selection here, if I select this, it's going to destroy everything that's around it. And it basically, in my opinion, it looks like crap. So uh, <laughs> let me back out of this and we'll kind of go on to a, a different way to handle this uh, type of a situation. If I take my selection tool, I grab those two voxels just like this. Those are the two that I want to get a hold of, but I have all this airspace above it. So let me take my selection and move it up into that air. And if you're familiar with playing around with your smooth tool, you always notice that even though this is what you have selected, it still affects everything that's around it. So you take your selection, take your smooth tool, and after you get it up in the air like this, you can literally click just like this to affect this just this area that you want it to apply. Now you can use a single voxel, two voxel, three voxel, whatever the length and size of it that it is that you want to affect, but you can see I've smoothed down that those two voxels right there to literally meld in to like this little trough roof thing that is over here. Um, this roof section actually came from um, you know one of my members of lethality and uh, they were having problems so I went over there and helped them out. But this is one way that you can handle dealing with certain little bumps and little things that are sticking out from something else but you only want to affect that one or two voxels versus playing around and having to deal with everything that's around it. Use the air, select it, and smooth it instead of actually selecting um, the actual item that you're working with. Um, and uh, Schrodinger Cat and Katana, they've, you know, they have totally so sold me on the skeleton key here. So um, I'm going to kind of show you cleaning up the rest of this rib in the process of, um, you know, fixing this one little bump. I'm also going to try to fix everything around it. And this kind of goes into play with the um, rib roof technique video that I put out. So I'm going to grab literally right on this artifact here on the side and you see it's lighter colored than everything around it and I'm just gonna drag beside it and click I'm gonna follow that deformation until I get rid of it there we go we've cleaned out that little one little artifact uh, by using nothing but the line tool and I'm gonna just do this on pretty much all the ones that I see here and I'm going to pull and paste and, or excuse me, pull and click, pull and click until I pretty much get rid of all the ones that I have on this side. And I can do the same thing on the other side as well. And just follow the, the strange little coloring there. Um, and basically what it's doing is forcing the, the voxels to play nice with you. <laughs> um, just to keep it, you know, pretty simple explanation. Um, you'll also you come across stuff like this where you know um, you get the artifacting right up against this face and it's on a curve now if you take your selection tool and instead of grabbing that one come over to where there's a good one or one that looks exactly like the one that you're working on and do a control C control V that way you can copy it and you can see I've got it up in the air here. I'm going to drop this down and paste it over top of the bad one right next to uh, this little ribbing and that kind of clears all that out. Um, we can do this with pretty much anything but when you're doing it you're also you have a chance to actually cause an artifact just like this. Um, by pasting it up on this little corner it causes that little artifacting. If I take my line tool, I can continue on through the process of cleaning it out. Um, this pretty much 
after you get this one completed and get it looking really good just select that whole entire rib but don't select just the rib come out one or two voxels on either side so you have that little buffer so you don't mess up those particular voxels and you just paste it over all your bad ones and somehow it didn't copy because my clients acting like a freak right now but <laughs> all right let's try this again control C V and we'll paste down right over top of the other one now this really isn't any kind of voxel voxelmancy or any magic uh, type stuff like a katana does but um, this is like kind of like a real-world approach to like a an issue that is pretty common and how to deal with these kind of merger points and the artifacting and and whatnot and hopefully that actually helps you um, the one thing I will say is do not use your line tool on a curved surface because if you do you're going to destroy it and as you can see right here that part was curved and if I do it here that right there all it does is deform it and not only deforms it but pretty much makes it back to a square so uh, keep your line tool away from the curved parts and that is pretty much everything I've got That's awesome. I like that. <clears throat> it's a very pretty big roof. Yeah, this was at, you, the actual building. This is uh, this came off of. This is just a small section of that roof, and I, I was like, man, well, that would I might be able to make a tutorial out of that. So I kind of jumped in with it. Yeah, I mean, it's really pretty. Yeah, it's a good that line tool thing is a good idea for smoothing out those little weird folds that you get on the side of something. What you're actually doing when you do that is you're adding volume to the voxel. It's just so small that you can't actually see it if it's on the head-on surface. If you do it too much, if you go nuts with it in the same spot, you can end up adding a lot of volume. So be really careful if you're doing it on a surface that's less than a volume thick because it'll, it'll make it get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you just gotta play with it. Yeah, if... So it won't work on micro boxes? It will make them, if you... Each click of the line tool will bring it one third of the distance it would take for it to become a full length voxel. Let me show you what I mean. You take a regular voxel and you smooth it. Just a couple times so you can see it's small. This is the skeleton key technique he was talking about and you click on it with the line tool and you just double click it'll grow it it'll get taller and taller and the same is true if a shape is like bigger than a voxel if you use the line tool on it it'll make it get smaller and if you want I can show you how to make some of your own shapes using this like triangles and flat ramp shapes and things like that cool that's like half of a voxel length, but I just use the line tool on it to grow it out. So be cautious doing that. It works great for regular voxel surfaces, but if you do it on your micro voxel surfaces, it will not smooth them out. <laughs>